My name is Ethan Smith. I'm a junior engineer at San Jose Water in the Capital Planning Department. And I'm going to share a little bit about our use of Viva Pi system to optimize our pump operations. So just a quick roadmap. I'll talk a little bit about our company. Um, the problem we are facing, uh, the Viva Pi system as that solution for that problem, how we implemented and applied it, and then some of the next steps for us as well as expected results. Uh, we had just adopted the system at the end of last year, so we're still in the process of you know, really realizing those results and those benefits, but I'll share with you what we expect to see. San Jose Water Company is a private investor-owned utility. It's been in operation for the last 150 years. Uh, we serve roughly a population of a million in the greater San Jose metropolitan area. You can see our service area in the figure on the screen. And to the right, you'll see kind of the breakdown of the different sources of water that we serve. So we import about 60% of our water from um, a third party. So it's purchased sur treated surface water. And then we pump uh, roughly 30 to 40 percent of um, our distribution with groundwater. That's the area in purple in the center. And then we have a treatment plant in the Santa Cruz Mountains where we serve about 10 percent. Uh, a little bit about our operations. We have a hundred different pressure zones and just to give you an idea of the scale and range you can see that map in the back with the different colors showing the different zones. Uh, within the zones are a number of stations, uh, 84 stations to be exact, um, some for groundwater extraction, others for inner zone pumping. Altogether, about 230 booster pumps and 83 groundwater uh, well pumps. And annually, they pump about 27 billion gallons. Uh, with all of that pumping, there are you know, some issues that arise and um, some problems we're trying to address with that. The most uh, important and impactful is the cost of pumping and 90 percent of our annual energy use comes from pumping operations it's about 40 million kilowatt hours and in california with the high rates that exist here it's a pretty substantial operational cost not to mention uh, a significant carbon footprint and so as our goal to you know reduce our carbon footprint as well as um, you know, have a return for our investors and improve quality and lower cost of service for our customers we want to drop that use better manage uh, our use of energy. And just to show you why this is becoming more and more pressing, this graph at the top right will show you how the relative price for electricity has increased since 2016. Um, you know, just last year we had a 100% increase uh, you know, over five years. And then by the end of this year, with the current rate increases, we're expecting a total 150% increase. Um, so a lot of incentive to, to reduce our use and better manage our use. Um, another cost that San Jose water um, is bearing is associated with eliminating monitoring. So we don't have any real time analytics coming into our operators. So we, we can't see the performance um, you know, in real time. So we end up having reactive maintenance. Um, you know, although we have data on existing pumps, we don't have a way of bringing it to operators so they can make decisions uh, in real time. And so as a result, roughly 10 to 20 pumps a year fail. And that causes strain on the system, um, can cause service interruptions, which is loss of revenue, upset customers, uh, things we want to avoid at all costs. And uh, it can be more expensive to do a last minute repair or replacement rather than a, a more proactive approach. And lastly, on the slide, um, right now we, we do have a pump prioritization um, system that we use, but it's reliant on old pump efficiency tests that are manually done in the field. So it's very resource demanding to have operators go out and you know, test each pump. It's infrequent, and so we're, we're running our system based off old data. And so we may not be using the cheapest, most efficient pump available. Uh, and the last problem before I go more to the solution, uh, we have, as I mentioned, uh, some data sources on our pumps, but they're all in the independent silos. So in SCADA, we have you know, pressure and flow and levels. Uh, but that's separate and independent of our power, temperature, and vibration data that's in SAMSERA. We have costs uh, from PG&E and, and through utility API and then rates directly from PG&E, all in their independent bins. And you can go to each one and pull it out, but there's no um, centralized software to pull it together uh, until we came across the Pi system. And as you saw in, in the last presentation, um, 
it has this ability to pull together all these different sources into a central data archive. So for us, there's uh, Pi connectors that use APIs to, to pull in the data, or like a Wonderware historian is a, a connector that pulls in directly from SCADA and stores it all in a central archive. Once it's in the archive, you can set up a framework that organizes the information, and you can set up um, analytics and have those analytics pushed out to a visualization tool such as PyVision or uh, a spreadsheet format such as the Excel with a data link. So I'll talk a little bit about both those applications. Uh, first, just a touch on the asset framework. So for San Jose Water, this is a basic breakdown of our setup. Uh, we have what are called parent elements, as I'm sure you guys will see later in the day um, within the framework. For us, that's our stations and our pressure zones. And there can be attributes you know, nested within those. And also underneath, there can be child elements. In our case, our pumps, our tanks, and our reservoirs. And each one has set up attributes that can be raw data, such as power, flow, pressures, status. And then you can take that information and create analytics that run whenever you decide, them, decide for them to be triggered to give us KPIs that are useful for operators, such as pump degradation, uh, the cost per million gallons, or the efficiencies of the pumps. Um, and you just create one template for a station and a pump. And once you create one template, you can apply it across all of your assets uh, in your system. So it's pretty efficient in that format. Um, Setting up the equations is, is not an easy task, especially if you have a complex system where, for example, pumps share flow meters. It's not straightforward. So we reached out for some support. Uh, Casney Engineering, they were a huge help in helping us uh, develop these equations, make sure all the calculations were running correctly and giving us the, the KPIs that our operators are looking for. A uh, major application that's been you know, influential and, and going to drive a lot of the savings for us are Pi alerts or um, Pi notifications, where we can set um, pretty much uh, a boundary condition for different KPIs. So if efficiency goes below a threshold, we'll get an email notification sent to an operator in real time. Uh, same with pump degradation. And as you know, with uh, electric utility, there's different times of day, time of use that have different rates that you get charged for using power. So we have alerts set up, so if a pump turns on during 4 to 9 p.m. when power is the most expensive, uh, right as soon as that pump turns on, alert will get sent to operator, and they can you know, turn that pump off if possible and you know, hold off until we get into a cheaper time of day. Um, so that's one application. Another major application is PyVision. So I have a, a screenshot and then a quick video I'll talk over to give you a, kind of a demo of, of what our system looks like. This is our uh, system level overview, where we have averages of our efficiencies and cost per million gallons displayed. So OPE is operational pump efficiency, and you can see they're listed at the top, where it's an average across all of our stations. And it's color coded to show quickly um, what range of performance it is, so good, moderate, bad. Um, and then purple would be a value that's you know, outside the range um, or doesn't have data quite yet. Um, and so, you know, not only can we see the efficiencies in real time, you can see how many pumps are running. Uh, we can compare costs from groundwater to imported water. And this gives us, you know, a look at the last timestamp according to the timetable at the bottom. And if you click on any value, a pop-up trend will come and we can see how is our system performance changed throughout, you know, the year or the month, whatever time scale we're interested in. So in addition to seeing our system performance or our station's performance, you can use this to navigate. So if an operator gets uh, an alert for a station and wants to go take a closer look, they can click on the station's name and be brought to um, another display here. And I'll start this video. So this is our 17th Street station, where once again, you can see the average efficiency, average cost per million gallons, uh, information on the uh, electric utility, such as you know, when the bill dates are, what rate we're in, uh, local weather is being pulled in through an API. Um, and then uh, most importantly, we have our power consumption. So for every category that PG&E charges in, whether it's peak, partial peak, 
off-peak, we're uh, keeping track of our max kilowatt, which is you know its own charge, and then total kilowatt hours, which is another charge. And we can quickly see if the station was running uh, when it shouldn't have been. So for example, we see we operated during peak. We can click to investigate, and it pulls up this time series trend where we can then um, you know, either change the time scale on the bottom, or we can click and drag on the map, or sorry, on the graph, zoom into a time of interest, click for a pop-up, and see, okay, on March 26, we, uh, we had a spike increased about 1,000 kilowatt hours. So with that information, we can then investigate you know, which pumps were running, how much power did they use, um, so we can you know, better manage when they perform uh, in the future. So scrolling down, you'll see how we have overviews of our boosters and our well pumps displayed on this. Uh, at the top here, you'll see we have two boosters at the station where once again, we can see efficiency, cost per million gallons, both an average and a real time value, um, information on you know, the source and destination of the flow, statuses on the pumps, um, everything our operators asked to see, we're able to put in Pi and pull into the vision for them. Um, another request they had was to be able to look at these time series plots of efficiency of cost per million gallons and flow and stack them so they can compare directly one pump to another and see how you know, the performance varies. Um, here you can then you know, change the time scale. So as I mentioned, we saw that March 26 date. We can you know, change the time scale from a week to one day, specifically enter the time and day that we're interested in. So moving to the 26, we can look and say, okay, we see pump two was operating in the morning and then um, midday it turned off and pump number one turned on. You can click and see a value, see a timestamp and get the information you need you know, right away. And then you can further investigate. So we have links, <clears throat> excuse me, to individual pump level information, where once again, you see efficiencies, cost per million gallons. Those are being plotted against the averages and you can you know, use that to see what the performance is in real time or any time of interest. Um, information on the inlet and outlet is provided. We have flow being plotted, suction pressure, discharge pressure. Everything that's in the asset framework can be pulled into a vision and it's up to the user how to set it up, what colors you want, that sort of thing. Um, you can see the pump curve comparison. We have manufacturer curve information being plotted along with every time the pump runs, we plot the head versus uh, flow to determine what that degradation is. Um, additionally, vibration data is coming. We have power being plotted. So, you know, everything that is in the asset framework, as I said, can be brought in. And here, most importantly, the total kilowatt hours. So we can see that uh, this, this pump did, in fact, run during peak, and we accumulated nearly 400 kilowatt hours. Um, gives us an idea of what to expect on the bill and um, helps us better plan for the future and um, better optimize how we perform. And you can see it doesn't quite make up that full thousand. So we could go back to the station, look at the wells, see what other pumps are running, kind of go through the same process. So that's, that's one way to investigate. Um, it's definitely more visually appealing than a spreadsheet, but spreadsheets are also very useful. So we have uh, the Excel data link that we use quite often to pull in any information that's in the archive into a spreadsheet format. So we set this up for operators so that it's very easy to use. You can select an asset and an attribute from a dropdown, set the timestamps you're interested in, and pull that, that attribute data directly in. Um, <clears throat> that's useful if you want single information. If you're looking for you know, more um, widespread performance on all of your assets to maybe feed into your asset management plans, that can be set up as well. Here we're pulling the average pump degradation for every single pump in our system. And then, like I said, you can feed that into a report for asset management um, or just use it for you know, information for your operators to, to selectively uh, look into potential errors or potential problems um, in the field. One last thing I'll touch on with the pump or with the data link is you can also you know, add all the attributes together uh, within a specific, or add all of the values together within a specific attribute. So 
if we, instead of want to investigate every pump in by division, we can just pull all of them in one spreadsheet and know which ones are running during peak, you know, what was their total use, how often did they run. And that information is right there in an easy digestible format. Okay. Lastly, just uh, next steps for us and some expected results. So as great as the Pi system is, it's only as good as the data that you have. And so for us, a big step is to calibrate our existing sensors, replace those that are faulty, and um, install new ones. Uh, roughly 70% of our uh, pumps have power sensors. And so you know, that's 30% that we're missing out on increasing efficiency. So that's a big next step. A uh, second thing we're working on is um, automating our pump ranking with real-time data from Pi. So we're already doing that, but we're using historic uh, efficiency data that's not necessarily up to date. And so now we can take that cost per million gallons from Pi, push it through the, the uh, web API that, Pi, uh, that Aviva offers, sorry, and to SCADA, where we can set priority for each control variable and pick the cheapest, most efficient pump. Lastly, some estimated savings. So until we had Pi, we didn't even know how many pumps were running during peak and how long they were running. You know, we just have to get a bill at the end of the month and we're like, oh man, this is way more than we expected. I guess something ran when it shouldn't have. Now with Pi, we can see um, just looking at a month, we had 30 pumps that ran during peak when they should not have. And looking at how long they ran and projecting that over the year and comparing the cost if they'd run in off peak versus on peak, it's half a million dollars in savings for us. Um, another expected result is a 2% increase in efficiency at a minimum just by prioritizing the most efficient pump. Uh, looking at which pumps are currently being uses, used versus the most efficient that could be used and you know, doing a time-weighted average based on how long they run, uh, it's a 2% increase. And when you're a large company using you know, 40 million a year, that's uh, 800,000 kilowatt hour reduction. So at pg and rates, that's $200,000 a year and you know, 560 metric tons of CO2. So a big step towards our goals. And just to finish off with some overall results, um, you know, we had issues of high expense and not being as efficient as possible. And we had the data there, we just didn't have a way of bringing it together. So Vision let us dissolve the data silos, um, acquire real-time monitoring and alerts, uh, have a way to export the data to use for further analytics or report generation. Um, we can now prioritize which pumps are chosen. And with the estimated savings, once we get everything rolling, it'd be less than a year for ROI.